Hello class, this is Professor Williams, College of San Mateo, Sociology 105. I want to talk to you about two chapters actually, chapter two and chapter three. Now I know you're probably finished with chapter two, but I want to backtrack just a little bit. Here's why. I know it was about, you learned a lot about aging. That's great because aging is something that we want to consider in our society, but these are the three things I really hope you got clearly before this chapter was out. Functionalism theory, conflict theory, symbolic interaction theory. Symbolic interactionism theory, okay? And here's why. These three theories are the main theories in sociology that you can cover for that topic. I'll have to tell you, as you go on through college life, as you study other sociology courses, this will keep coming up and coming up. They will assume, in many of your classes, they will assume that you know this and you understand it, and they'll use the term casually. And if you don't, that's an issue. So you really want to know this. All right, functionalism. Okay, that's a theory that says if it functions okay in society, it works. Now. There are a lot of ways to take human behavior and divide them up into pieces, right? These three, this is a way, this is a way, and this is a way that a lot of sociologists, particularly in academia, have agreed that this is how we'll talk about things. Now, if you are a functionalist, say you're a, you believe in the functionalist theory, here's the thing. You believe that whatever's going on in society, if it works, if it functions, it helps society function, then it's probably okay. I'm going to give you an example. Not a pleasant one, but still an example. Okay, think about prostitution. All right, I know you're thinking, oh, horrible, horrible for the women, horrible for society, but actually, functionalists might say to you, well, it works for the, uh, the prostitute. They get money and they get a way to make money even if they're not qualified or able to do other things in society, so they're happy. The person that they are servicing, they're happy because they're getting what they want. Um, it's not hurting anybody, it's a victimless crime, so it functions, it works. So we're okay with, with uh, prostitution. Maybe, um, of course now, I don't agree with that. I'm not a functionalist and I don't agree with that theory and we'll talk more about that whole prostitution thing in chapter three. But talking to you right now about functionalism. Let me back up against another one. Symbolic interactionism, big long term, right? Symbolic interactionism, symbolic, nothing complicated about that, symbols, symbols that stand for things. Interactionism, People interacting with one another, speaking, communicating with each other, looking at each other, giving each other certain looks. In symbolic interactionism, that is a theory in sociology that um, believes that most of sociology, most society, is driven by how people interact with each other and that they do that in terms of symbols. Now, just so that you uh, don't freak out too much, words are symbols, are they not? Think about that for a minute. If you have a word, you say box, it's only a box in your mind and you know what to picture because we have made a symbol for box and so therefore you know what it is. So therefore, symbolic interactionism, words, gestures, there's a gesture, right? Okay, gestures, that's symbolic interactionist and symbolic interactionism. There's a way people interact with each other and we actually come to some agreement, right? as to what these gestures and these uh, symbols mean and this uh, this way of interacting. And we all kind of agree. And that is a theory, that is what, another theory uh, in sociology. Okay, now, this is my favorite one. Conflict, conflict theory. I say it's my favorite one because it's very direct, all right? Conflict theory goes like this. There's always these various groups in society and one group is against the other group. If one group, if they have a problem, one group wins, the other group loses, okay? And, the, and that's a strange and to me a very limited way to look at life, but if you are a conflict theorist, then that's the way you look at life, all right? If you have poor people and you have people who are middle class or upper class, and if, you're some, if you are a conflict theorist, then you're thinking, this, uh, the poor people, if they get something, then the other people lose something and vice versa. And so this limits things. Um, there is a famous, actually, conflict theorist in sociology that you would be familiar with, Karl Marx. Yeah, that doesn't surprise you a lot, does it? Think about it for a minute. A lot of these revolutionaries, they kind of look at life that way as opposed to 
um, to me what life really is, which is a combination and a coming together of we don't have to both have win and lose. We could have win and win. We could have win a little, win a little. You know, not everybody get everything they want, but they might get some of what they want. So please go back, look at those three things, make sure you have them down and hate the, I don't mean to drum this in a lot, but yes, it will be on the final and various other tests as well, because it's important to us. You really need to know that. All right, let me talk now a little bit about chapter three, but before I do a little bit of housekeeping, okay? Um, a little housekeeping that goes like this. Be sure to look for the various items that go with your quizzes and, and your forums, right? Okay, you'll see the little red check mark that says this is a quiz. Well, there's something that goes with that. That's something that's probably on the Pearson website. Most of them are. Find it. Find out how to find it, how to uh, locate it. Look at it. A lot of them are videos. Read it. Some of them are extra reading. And then you have a much greater chance of filling out those questions, those little few questions that you get on each one of those items, okay? Set that aside for a second, all right? Let's go now and talk about uh, chapter three. Okay, chapter three is social problems related to sexual behavior. Told you that prostitution thing was gonna come up again. All right, this is tough, this is tough. Here's why, okay, every society has its wrongs and its rights, and this is what's wrong, and this is, uh, in our society, we consider this not the thing to do, and these are the things we think are the right thing to do, and I have to tell you, in many different societies that you'll ever run into in your entire life, you're going to find out that a whole lot of what's wrong and what's right are rather similar, rather similar. Okay, you should not steal from other people. You don't take another person's life. You don't um, take their property. You don't uh, abuse them. Uh, obvious stuff, right? And sure, it might come in different forms, but basically from society to society that you go to, they have rules about that and they're very similar. But when it comes to sexual behavior, it's purely what that society feels or thinks about sexual behavior and what type of sexual behavior that they themselves believe is wrong or right. Now, if this is sound, sounding fuzzy to you, and you're thinking, uh, sounds like they're just, they just kind of made it up. They did. They did. They just kind of made it up. And who made it up? Those with more power, those with the ability to make laws for or against anything, and then just general social belief, you know? A lot of people in this country uh, have religions that, have, um, that are based on Christianity, which would say the Bible. Okay, so if it's based on the Bible and they believe what's in the Bible and they, and they interpret the Bible like this, certain sexual behaviors are wrong, then the society as a whole may act in that way, that social, social, certain behaviors, sexual behaviors are wrong. All right, now let's talk about prostitution. All right, so as you can imagine in our society, prostitution we consider not so good. All right. And there are various ways to look at that. You could look at it from the functionalist perspective, as we did a minute ago. You can look at it from the conflict theorist perspective. You can look at it at the symbolic interactionist perspective. Okay. What we do about the prostitution um, when in our society, we arrest people. We, I mean, it is so bad. We feel so strong about this that it has entered the realm of laws, not just that people look down on you or they don't want to be associated with you if you do it, but it's different. We actually put laws in there which says you're going to go to jail. But are you ready for this? It is the female, the prostitute, who goes to jail, have their reputation uh, ruined, and are treated badly by our society. The person who is being serviced, hmm, hardly anything. That's an interesting concept, isn't it? If we're so against it, don't we want to punish both sides equally? Or could it be that only one of those sides have the more power in our society? And that would be the male side, because a lot of the people who get service in prostitution are males, and the males, they're getting service, and they're making the laws, and they're the police. You draw your own conclusions there. When you go through chapter three, I think you're going to be thinking about some of these things. I got another tough one for you. Pornography. Looking at dirty pictures. I challenge you, what is pornography? 
good questions. Simple question, but a good one, because who gets to determine exactly what is a dirty picture? And then who gets to say, if you look at these dirty pictures, you're doing something wrong to society. You're doing something wrong for society, excuse me. And so therefore you should be punished. You should go to jail. And pornography, we, we it has entered the realm of laws, which means we don't just feel bad about it, tell our children not to do it, look down on you. We will put you in jail for pornography. And so we got to make those, those distinctions, right? This is a moral judgment. Can we legislate morality? And if we can, how good are we at it? How good are we at it? How do you stop that? If somebody is stealing, that's pretty straightforward. This pro pro property belonged to one person, doesn't belong to you, you took it, okay. That, um, that's not real hard to distinguish. Pornography, harder. Harder to distinguish. What is what? Do we constantly argue about these things? Are there constantly people coming up saying, um, that's not really pornography, or it's not real pornography, or um, it wasn't that much, or who started it, or, wow, a lot to be said. I challenge you to take a good look at that and come up with your own opinions. Those of you who have not yet chosen your midterm presentation topic, take a good look at chapter three. I bet you're gonna find some things that interest you a lot. Thanks a lot. I will see you again um, shortly. <laughs> I'll be making another video talking to you about what's coming up for us. Do start choosing your topics for the midterm, by the way. It'll be here before you know it, <laughs> and you'll be glad that you've already uh, made your selection. Okay. Talk to you again.